Hello friends, this video on surface area and volumes part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The topics to be covered in this chapter are introduction, surface area of cuboid and cube. We will also understand surface area of right circular cylinder and also surface area of right circular cone. We will also study surface area of spheres. For all these we will also study volume. So for these we have studied, uh, we will study surface area, we will also study volume for uh, cuboid, volume for cylinder, volume for right circular cone, volume of a sphere and then we will do a quick summary. Uh, the chapter is all about surface area and volume. So the question is what is area and what is volume? See, area is nothing but amount of space inside the boundary of a 2D object. Okay, that is area, not surface area. Area is nothing but amount of space inside a two dimensional object. So, we have studied about this. There is a circle. This amount of space inside the circle will be area of the circle is rectangle the amount of space inside this rectangle will be area of the rectangle or any object this is any object amount of space inside this close to the object inside the boundary of the rectangle okay so this is area when you talk about surface area when you talk about surface area so you talk about 3D objects. Okay, so surface area of a solid 3D object is the measure of the total area that the surface of an object occupies. For example, if you are talking about this glass, this glass occupies some surface. That is the surface area of this glass. Okay, similarly, this glass will occupy some uh, uh, surface. That will be the surface area of the glass. So when you talk about surface area, you generally talk about inner surface area. You talk about outer surface area. So we'll have different terms, inner surface area, outer surface area, total surface area, a lot of things. Okay, we will talk about these things later. Let's understand surface area is nothing but the area of a solid 3D object and it is a measure of total area that a surface of an object occupies and typically it is used to find uh, let's suppose the cost of painting so I have two glasses and I want to paint them red and the cost of painting per square foot let's suppose the same can you guess which glass, glass A or glass B cost, will cost more? Obviously glass B, right? Looking at this only you can make out that the glass B has more surface area. Since the surface area is more, the cost of painting will be more, right? So surface area is typically uh, um, measured in the units, SI unit of meter square or centimeter square, stuff like that. That is surface area. When you talk about volume, Volume is nothing but it is the quantity of a 3D space enclosed by some bond. So it is the quantity of a 3D space. So let me write here. Volume is nothing but quantity of 3D space enclosed by some closed boundary. And you'll notice that the volume typically is measured in meter cube, centimeter cube, and also liters. We'll see a relationship between uh, centimeter cube and liters. Okay, so this is surface area and volume. So, for example, if you want to talk about volume, the quantity of water it can hold. So, if you let's suppose I have some water here, and I want to know glass A or glass B, which will hold more water. Obviously, glass B. Glass B is big in size. So, 
it is nothing but quantity of water it can hold or quantity of air it can hold quantity of grains or quantity of milk anything quantity of solid liquid or gas a particular container can hold that is nothing but the volume of that particular container correct so the difference between surface area and volume surface area is typically in the meter square centimeter square volume is in the unit of meter cube centimeter cube liter okay surface area is nothing but the total area that the surface of the object occupy for example this is the surface of this glass total area this surface of this glass occupy is surface area right typically used for calculating the cost of painting when you talk about volume volume is the quantity of 3d space is the quantity of 3d space enclosed by some closed bond in closed boundary so this is typically used to find the volume of water for example in this case how what is the volume of water or the quantity of water that, that this container can hold right so this in, inside uh, volume the quantity of space inside a particular 3d object that is volume correct surface area is the external area it is in the terms of meter square and volume is how much water it can hold or how much liquid it can hold that is volume okay so having studied this let's study about cubes cuboids cylinders cones and spheres i'll just give you brief introduction on these objects because we are going to study surface area and volumes of these objects this is cuboid which has length breadth and height so typically uh, this is the length this is the breadth this is the height okay this is q all the sides are of same length so in this case i have assumed all the sides are of length a this is sphere so this is a radius of the sphere r so collection of all points in three dimension where the distance of those points from a fixed center is fixed value that is r that becomes sphere this is cylinder the right here this is sphere a good example of sphere is ball or even the earth is almost sphere this is cube this is cylinder so when you think of the cylinder think of the cylinder in the home the gas cylinders almost resembles this is cone in fact this is not just a cylinder this is right circular cylinder i'll tell you why because this is circular and this is circular and this actually makes 90 degree with the axis so this is right circular cylinder and this cone also which i am talking about is nothing but right circular cone we'll be studying about right circular cylinder and right circular cone itself so when i say right cylinder i mean right circular cylinder in this chapter when i say cone i mean right circular cone in this chapter so this is this part the base will be uh, circular and the same base will be 90 degree to this axis we'll talk about these things in detail this is just to give you a feel of what all objects we are going to study sphere cuboid cube a cylinder and cone if you don't know about these objects pause this video for some time and just view this object so that you get acquainted with this object the next question that comes to our mind is why should we study the surface area and volumes of these objects cone sphere cylinder cuboid cube that's a very genuine question if you see the brick right if you want to if you have wall and if you want to know what is the cost of painting this wall and in that case you need you definitely need the concept of surface area because you have to find the surface area of this wall right if you want to find actually if you want to build this kind of wall and you want to know what is the cost of building this wall then in that case you have to find the volume of this wall right and then you have to find the volume of one brick and then dividing you get the number of bricks correct so the total cost of construction of this wall you can actually calculate if you know the concept of surface area and volumes right the so total cost of construction of the wall or total cost of construction of the or painting of the walls so for all these you need 
to understand the concepts of surface area and volume. If you have a box and if you want to find the cost of creating this box paper, let's suppose, and you know the cost of per square feet for a sheet, then in that case you want to know how much, how many square feet of sheets are required to build this box, right? Or again, if you want to paint this box, you want to find the area of this box. So there, the concept of surface area and volume is required, right? If you want to create this box, get this box painted, any of this case, in this case, you'll be requiring the concept of surface area. And if you talk about the volume, so for example, uh, you want to fill this uh, air with grains. So if you want to fill this area with grains, you want to know how much grains this box can hold. For that, you want you have, you have to find the volume of this particular box. And in this case, it is a cuboid box. So you will need to find the surface area and volume here as well. Other example is a ball. If you have a ball and if you want to know, for example, the cost of creating this ball. So there also you need uh, the concept of uh, surface area or you want to get this ball painted. There also you need the cost of the concept of surface area. Or if you want to know how much, how many uh, liters of soup you can fill in in this uh, bowl, right? So in that case, you have to know the concept of volume of, in this case, it's a hemisphere. You have the room and the room, if you want to know what is the cost of painting the walls, you have or you should know the concept of surface area. If you want to know how much air is required to fill this room, you need to know the concept of volume or let's suppose you are dumping, it is a go down, it's a go down and you're dumping some goods, right, you're dumping some goods and, and you want to know the number of goods you can dump in this go down, then you should know the concept of finding volumes. In that case, you'll find the volume of a good and you'll have to find the whole volume of the room and then you can divide the volume of the room by the volume of uh, one particular article to get the number of articles that can be fit in this go down. If you have a ball, you want to get it painted, you should know the concept of surface area because once you get the surface area, then only you can come up with the exact painting cost. You want to know how much air is required to fill this ball, then you need to understand the concept of volume as well. So we have a tent, you want to know how much cloth is required to prepare this tent, you need to understand the concept of surface area. You want to know how many people can be accommodated in this tent. Right? How many people can stay in this tent? So in that case, you should know how to find the volume of this tent. You create a pencil box. You want to know the cost of making this pencil box. Then you should know, or you want to get this painted. You want to know the cost of painting this pencil box. Then you have to find, uh, you find the surface area of this uh, box. Or if you want to know how many pencils this particular box can hold. Right? For example, the question is, this is the pencil box and the dimensions are given. I want to know if it can hold 10 pencils, 20 pencils, then you have to or you should know the concepts of volume for this particular object. In this case, it is a cylindrical. There is a, a joker cap, you want to create a joker cap, you want to know the cost of creating this joker cap. Uh, there as well, you will have to know the concept of surface area. Uh, you want to know the cost of plastering a well, uh, you should know the concept of finding surface area or you want to know how much water can be stored in this well or a tank, then you should know the concept of, of finding the volumes. Right? Typically, yeah, we need uh, the concept of volume to find the uh, volume of water or any liquid that can be stored in a tank or the amount of the number of uh, uh, pencils or anything that can be uh, fit in a particular uh, object, for example, in this case, container. So in these kind of scenarios, we do need to understand the concepts of surface area and volume. Pretty interesting topic uh, and pretty easy topic as well, I believe, if you understand the concepts. Before we go further, let's understand the concepts of 2D and 3D objects. So 2D objects are something which has only X and Y coordinates. Right? And 3D will be something which will have Z coordinates also and this becomes 3D. That is something we know. For example, a sheet of paper will be a two-dimensional object. A book will be a three-dimensional object. You can actually convert 2D to 3D by adding one dimension. 
I'll show you. For example, there's a sheet, right? I'll, I'll pile up so many sheets on the same sheet. So, right, so you see there are so many sheets piled up. Okay, with this, what you get is a cuboid. So, if you see all these papers together, what you see is a cuboid. So all these papers were 2D, each of these were 2D, right? When you club all these, you get a Z coordinates also, right? For example, this paper had only X and Y. Now, since you piled up so many papers, what you got is Z also. So this became a 3D object. This was 2D, you got a 3D object from this. Okay, another example, for example, I have a circle, right? So let's pile up many circles. So if you, and this circle, if you see, you know, we know circle is a two dimensional object. We have studied this in the previous chapter. Circle is a two dimensional object. So if you pile up many circles like this, what you get is a right circular cylinder, right? This was a 2D object. What you get is 3D object. Why? Because this circle had only uh, radius and it had only X and Y coordinates. You have added a Z coordinate as well in this. So it became a three dimensional object. As I told, a good example is paper is a two dimensional because in paper we assumed the height of the paper to be negligible, thickness of the paper to be negligible. It is considered a two. It is considered as a two dimensional object, but when you pile up a lot of papers together, you get a book. So book has, if you see, this is the height of the book and this is, let's suppose, length and this is the breadth. So it is a three-dimensional object. Okay, so two-dimensional object will have x and y coordinates, three-dimensional object will have x, y and z coordinates. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attend free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.